Hey everyone, welcome back. I am doing some quick meal prep in between NFL playoff games. The Chiefs won! Woohoo! I already made the hummus and I did a previous video on that. That's why I'm not including this here, but I'll put a link down below in case you want to see how I make that. I'm going to do a fall kale and butternut squash with barley salad tomorrow. And I will also meal prep uh, a zucchini lentil bacon cassoulet in between the two. That'll be my lunch all week long. And then this is, this is about seven apples. And then I give it probably about a third of a cup of sugar-free maple syrup. Just enough to get all the apple slices a little wet. Ground cinnamon, probably the equivalent of a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. I don't even measure. I just dump. And then I like a little nutmeg in mine. This is to taste, so you do what suits you, but I'll, just a little sprinkle of that. And then just mix it up to coat all this, the uh, chopped apples. And then I'm going to bake this just like you would a pie at 350 for about 45 minutes. The equivalent of about a third of a cup of baked apples, which would probably be close to a whole apple, you know, by the time they bake down. I pulled a couple Ziploc bags of frozen bananas. So always drain your frozen bananas before you attempt to use them. That is four large bananas that I'm putting in there. And even though they look pretty gooshy, I think that'll, that'll be just fine. Okay, so this recipe I'm using is from Natasha's Kitchen. And I'll put a link down below for you if anyone's interested. So I've got these bananas that are mushy already. So I'm just going to give those a little bit of a, a stir. Just, and then uh, the recipe calls for two eggs. That's about a dollar's worth right there. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to whip those eggs in with the bananas. Normally, most recipes call for adding the bananas at the end. But because these are already frozen and don't need to be mashed, I'm going to start with the bananas. All right, so half a cup or one stick of room temperature butter. And then three-fourths a cup of sugar. A teaspoon of vanilla. One teaspoon of baking powder. And half a teaspoon of salt. So you just give that a good stir and then you add your flour. I pre-measured that. It's one and a half cups of flour. I love banana bread. I don't know why, but it seems like comfort food to me. Stir vigorously. <laughs> then pour into a greased pan. This is a five by nine pan. That's what the recipe calls for. Girls don't care for walnuts, so I'm just going to top this bread with some of the brown sugar and walnuts and a little bit of oatmeal flakes. But you know what? That looks darn right delicious to me. If I'm the only one that eats it, I'm okay with that. All right, so that's going to go in the oven for the usual hour. Here are the baked apples. Finished banana bread. It won't be cool enough to do anything with. It's 10 o'clock on Saturday night. The Eagles are blowing the Giants out of the water, so I'm done watching football and I'm going to go relax. Good morning, everyone. And I'm back on the meal prep slash making breakfast. If you saw that I had some cooked sausage that I had tucked into my bits and bites bin, and that's 
what is kicking off making this dish. It couldn't be simpler. These are going to be sausage, cream cheese, croissant bites. So the recipe calls for two cans of croissants, 16 ounces of sausage, and eight ounces of cream cheese, eight ounces of cheddar or cheese of your choice. This is about half a roll of sausage. There are only three people in our family, so I'm cutting this recipe in half. And in addition to using up that sausage, I had two cans of crescent rolls in the fridge. These were on a BOGO, of course, and they expired December 17th. But you know how this stuff is. If, if the seal is still good, they'll be good. So I'm going to use them before they go bad. So you start with the ground sausage. I have an ounce of cream cheese left over from making pasta the other night. And now I'm going to add another three ounces. I'm going to stir this up before I add the cheese. And how cute is this bowl? A co-worker gave it to me for Christmas. I just love it. So yeah, you get this mixed up. And then I'm going to add the cheddar. So this is about a cup of cheese in here still. So I'm going to use half of that. I mean, with the cream cheese in there already, you don't really need a lot more cheese. I think it's more for a taste and color than it is for creaminess, right? And if you're starting out with already cooked sausage, boy, this comes together really quick. I think this would also work really well with something like taco meat or leftover chicken, barbecue chicken. That would be delicious for an appetizer kind of thing. So if you've never tried these, you might want to give it a whirl. I've already got my pan over there sprayed with Pam. We'll get these each triangle I'm going to cut into two. Lay those out. These reheat really well, especially if you have an air fryer. So uh, because there's just three of us, there will probably be, oh, I'm going to say probably at least eight of these left over. So I put about a generous tablespoon in there and roll that up. I like to kind of tuck the ends around the filling because you know how it can just sort of bake out. Okay, so one down, 15 to go. <laughs> and if some of your croissant triangles, after you cut them in half, seem a little narrow where you're going to put the filling, just stretch that a bit. Okay. Okay, so eggs in, and I scraped every drop out of the bowl because one drop's worth a penny these days, right? A little salt and pepper. I'm going to uh, turn the burner off on the eggs so they don't overcook or get cold. I'll just let these sit for a minute on their own. All right, so that's what they look like once they're cooked, the little sausage bites. And the whys are going to chow those down. Okay, so we've got breakfast over with. And now I'm going to put these baked apples that I made yesterday into little snack size bags. I put the bags in these little juice cups because then I can bang them out quicker. Okay, so I have my eight bags of baked apples. It's about a half a cup of cooked apple. And I'm going to put four in the fridge and four in the freezer. I'm going to cut open this banana bread with its confused toppings. Doesn't it look amazing, though? I hope it tastes good. You never know with frozen bananas. Sometimes they can have a little funk. But... This is what it looks like on the inside, and I'll let you know after I taste it how it is.
eight of these croissant bites left. One of my bits and bites been when I took stuff out of the freezer, the side by side, when I just wanted to show you, I've cleared through quite a little bit already. And now I'm getting ready to do some prepping for my meal prepping. This butternut squash that I threw in here, we'll see how this turns out, but I had cut this up and put it in here raw. And I am going to put it on the same sheet pan that I just baked those croissant bites on. I'm not even going to wash that thing. It's got plenty of Pam on it still. A little sausage croissant flavor on this squash will only improve it, right? But I'm going to try to roast this at a really hot temp, about 425, for maybe just 10 minutes. I'm hoping it'll not get too mushy. It's already a little on the mushy side from being frozen and thawing out. But I'm gonna give it, like I said, 10 minutes. I might even put it on broil for a couple of those 10 minutes and see if I can get this, not crisp per se, but kind of browned up on the edges and a little quasi dehydrated so it's not mushy in my salad. Okay, so I did not get the taco empanadas made last night because the YAs took off went bowling and planned to eat dinner at the bowling alley with their friends. So I'm going to adjust my meal plan a little bit during the week and actually make those for a meal because tonight I'm cooking the turkey breast that I've had in the freezer since the Ibotta deal back in early December. So maybe some sweet potatoes. This bag of lentils, it's a little over a year old in the freezer, but it's held up really well. You see how they're more holding their shape. And I'm going to use those to make the zucchini cassoulet later today. And probably half this bag of bacon will go in there. And the butternut squash salad. I'm going to use this. Then I had planned to do like a corned beef hash yesterday morning, but the Y's took themselves out for breakfast at Panera, one of their favorite spots on the weekend. So I'm gonna put this back in the freezer. It's still a little frozen. I don't wanna waste this corned beef. And I will hopefully get that made next weekend. Brown sugar, oatmeal, and I think this is just butter and brown sugar. I think I'll combine these and add a little bit unsweetened coconut flakes and use this to make with some pecans, the topping on my, my little dish of sweet potatoes tonight. And I will probably only use half of that. So I'll just save the other half for next time I make muffins or whatever needs a little tasty topping. And I'm down to just these items versus that huge pile you saw yesterday. And I'm going to meal prep with all of these today and the taco meat probably tomorrow we'll do this taco empanada and here's how my butternut squash turned out that i'm prepping for my fall salad and i think that's just about perfect for saying they were frozen and thawed out so i'm out here in the laundry room to take a look at the state of my potatoes but i thought i'd share really quick the state of our snack basket there We've actually managed to chow through, I'd say maybe a third of what had been in that basket. I certainly won't be buying any chippy cracker type snacks anytime soon, but the YAs may end up doing that and adding them to that basket. Here are the six, seven apples I have left from doing my baked apple prep. Those I'm assessing my potatoes because I want to use two of those sweet potatoes tonight to make our little turkey dinner and I want to use a package of the cooked beef roast that's in my bits and bites bin to make beef stew this week and I see in looking at the weather that Thursday it's supposed to be relatively cool for us overnight lows in the 40s and a high of 73 so I think that'll be a perfect day for beef stew and even though a couple of these are getting some growth I think they feel like they'll hold up at least another four days and I'll use the majority of those for the stew and I have maybe two left. And then the onions are all in good shape. I've just recently bought all those in the last two weeks.
Okay, so I'm back with what will be the last of the meal prepping for the weekend. And I promise I'll put links below to all of the recipes that I have recipes for, for all of these dishes you'll have seen here on this video. And I'll start by saying I had bought right when I got back from the holidays. So the end of December, if you guys saw that shopping haul, I did a huge produce haul at Aldi. And at that time I bought, I think it was three zucchini and I'm down to one. And you guys, I caught this thing just in the nick of time. So glad I'm not wasting that. And I had bought an entire bag of celery, which I had used none of until today. And I'm going to use up the whole thing today. Curried turkey salad that I'm planning on making with the leftovers from the turkey breast that I'm making for dinner tonight. And the other half or a fourth, I'm going to chop up to make a little tiny thing of dressing. And then the other half of the celery, I'm just going to chop up and put in the freezer. This section I lost the sound on for a few seconds, so bear with me. I'm just chopping up some orange bell pepper that I pulled out of the freezer. That will go in the zucchini cassoulet. I'm chopping it in small pieces, a half inch or so. And um, in that pan, I already have half a chopped onion and a little minced garlic as well as the zucchini that I chopped up earlier. I try to chop them all in as uniform of pieces as possible just because I like the way it looks. It also helps it cook more evenly. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you a little trick. I don't like using a nut grinder because I don't have a grinder that's dedicated just for nuts. So what I do when I want crushed or chopped nuts, put them in a bag and I smack them with my meat mallet. Done in like three seconds and you don't have to wash a grinder. Okay, so chopped nuts. Those are going in the turkey curried salad. Those are smoked almonds, by the way. Okay, so these are the sautéed veggies for the lentil cassoulet. And these are the onions and celery, which I almost got too dark for the little mini uh, stuffing that we're doing or dressing. And I'm going to add the equivalent of about a tablespoon of minced garlic to the lentil dish. I'm gonna let that just warm gently there in the pan while I chop up some bacon. All right, so back to my bits and bites out of my freezer. Now I'm down to just the taco meat and this then can go out in the garage. I'm going to use about half this bacon and I'll just put the other half back in the fridge. The girls can use it for sandwiches or whatever this week. I could just give this a rough chop about half inch pieces. All right, so about the equivalent of a cup. This is the equivalent of about a cup of the cooked lentils that I made a little over a year ago and I'm going to add about half of those and give it a stir and then decide if I want to add more. Okay so I'm adding the lentils. I'm trying to keep leftovers down. Leftovers as in ate as much as we can stand in a week and the rest would be Tim freezer so I'm trying to avoid that of course. Okay, so I'm going to call that good enough. And I'm going to add some thyme, salt, and pepper. And that'll be that finished dish. You could easily serve this over rice. I like it just as a side dish for a change. 
And of course, it's fairly high in protein and fiber as well as vitamins. So I call that one a 100% win. Just to give you a little closer look, that is probably about three cups of cooked veggies and lentils. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this autumn salad. I'll link the recipe down below. The recipe calls for cooked sweet potatoes, but I've made it with the butternut squash before, and that's what I'm using this time around, as you know, because I used it up out of my freezer. So I'm just giving this kale a rough chop. I didn't bother to remove the stems because they are really tiny, being that it's fresh and immature kale. So that's probably about a cup of kale. And I'm trying to make the equivalent of about three servings of this because I'm also going to be doing that lentil cassoulet this week. And then uh, baby spinach. I'm going to put about a cup in there, maybe a cup and a half. And I've already made the dressing, which is included in the recipe link down below. This is that maple vinaigrette I think I mentioned in a video last week. Uh, but I made a double batch at the time to go with that hair salad. And this is enough for two or three salads. And I'm making about three servings worth of the salad I'll be putting it on. So I think we'll be good to go for the week with this. So to the butternut squash, kale, and spinach, I'm gonna add about, call it a third of a cup, because I'm gonna be having it with a curried turkey salad, which will have golden raisins in it. I'm not going too hard on the craisins. And then about a third to a half a cup of chopped pecans, you know, to taste there. Just a little toss, and then I'm going to divide it into three containers so it's ready to go for the week. And then at work, I will dress it in the bowl with the dressing and some feta cheese, as well as serving a scoop of the curried turkey salad on the side. I forgot to mention, I'm also adding about a cup of this barley, maybe a little less, and whatever's left, I'll pitch. The link down below does not call for barley, but another salad that I had tried prior to this one did call for it. And I really like that extra little bit of uh, fiber that you get with it. And since I'm trying to use this up, I'm going to stick some in there. Okay, to give you an idea of what this looks like mixed up. And like I said, you can do it with or without the barley. It looks dry because there's no dressing on it yet, of course. And I'm going to divide it into these containers and get on with making some sweet potatoes. So you can see it's about oh, two thirds of the way up the Tupperware on each of these containers. I'll dump that into a big salad bowl at work and put that curry turkey salad on the side. Okay, just to wrap up what feels like a marathon meal prep weekend. This will be my curry turkey salad. So I've got about a third of a cup of chopped smoked almonds, about a third a cup of maybe half a cup of chopped celery. This is more uh, use it up for my freezer. These are golden raisins. I'm gonna put about a third of a cup of those in there. Not quite all of them. Imagine there are two cups of chopped chicken or chopped turkey. You can do it with either one in here because ultimately that is what will happen at the end of the evening after we've had our quasi Thanksgiving dinner. And I add about a tablespoon of curry powder heaping because we like it and it's healthy. I start with that and after I get it all mixed up, I give it a taste and I may add a little more, but I think that'll probably be sufficient. And then just a couple shakes of seasoned salt and the equivalent of about half a teaspoon of black pepper. 
And then I will add Hellman's mayonnaise because I don't like sweet mayo. And uh, it will probably be about a third a cup like a little on the dry side. So, you know, that's two tastes, but just to give you guys an idea, because this is probably the finished product is probably not going to make it on film. So I just wanted to show you what all goes into it with the exception of the turkey. And if you like the flavor of curry, I highly recommend this salad. I actually invented this myself. And I think what really gives it the spin that my YA and I love are the smoked almonds. Okay, so just a quick look at the meal plan for the week. This is the last week of January as far as the full week goes. So we're having the turkey. Um, instead of mashed potatoes, we're going to have sweet potatoes and dressing. And I probably won't do any corn. I'll probably wait and put that with the taco cups tomorrow night. And then some frozen green beans. The taco cups, I'm going to make those with the frozen already cooked taco meat. And I might do a meal prep video on that. We'll see. The pork lo mein, I'm going to make that for some, from some more frozen leftover pork roast. Burgers and Tots. If you've been following my channel, you know why that's on there. Plus, it's nice to have a quick to throw together meal during the week. Beef stew, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be nice and cool that day. Going to use leftover roast from the freezer. Friday, yo yo means you're on your own. Possibly, we'll be having leftovers. And then Saturday, I have not decided what to make, although I'm sure it will involve chicken because other than turkey tonight, the remainder of the week is going to be either beef or pork. So I figure we'll be ready for chicken and goodness knows we have plenty. And then on the meal prep list, I've made the apples, I made the hummus, I made the banana bread, I've made the autumn salad, I've made the zucchini and lentil cassoulet, I've prepped the curry turkey salad, I just have to add the chopped leftover turkey after the meal tonight. I made those sausage bites. I have not made dilly bread yet, so I may or may not get that done tonight. But I have half a carton of cottage cheese in there that I definitely want to use up because it's already expired and I want to get it gone. And plus, I really love dilly bread. So that's the plan for the week. So here's our little Thanksgiving-ish meal. It turned out really well. I decided to serve the cassoulet along with everything else that I made tonight. Thanks for watching, you guys.